You know the story, you're on your phone, you're probably talking to someone or simply browsing the web and then boom, the electricity goes out and then suddenly your network drops, you go from 5G to 4G to 3G and even no network whatsoever. What's going on here? For today, let's take a deep dive into why your network sucks during power outages and load shedding. Hey, what up? It's your boy Mark Justice back again with another video. And with more than 200 days of load shedding or power cuts in 2022 uh, for South Africa, today we are going to be looking at five big reasons why your cell phone network tends to suck during times of load shedding. As always, this uh, video is brought to you by the team over at Lion Media. Uh, head on over to check out some of the crispiest uh, photo, video and audio content. That's www.lionmedia.com. Head on over, uh, check it out and just see uh, what the team can do for you. Now, before we go too far, we need to define what load shedding is. This occurs in a situation where the national power grid isn't able to meet uh, the demands of the country from an electricity point of view. Limited power is uh, sort of rationed across the country and you have power being shed in one area whilst being kept on um, in another so that you reduce the load on that national grid. This is done according to a series of stages depending on how much power there is to go around at stage one for example you are shedding 1000 megawatts from the national grid um, all the way up to stage eight um, where you are shedding as much as uh, 8000 megawatts putting in terms that the everyday person will understand stage one consists of uh, three two hour power outages implemented over four days uh, or three four hour power outages that are implemented over eight days currently south africa finds itself at uh, stage six at the time of recording this means 18 times for four days of up to four and a half hours at a time or 18 times over eight days for about two hours at a time the reason why we're even talking about this is because even in times of power cuts communication still needs to happen and Vodacom actually showed um, that during times of power cuts there is even an increase in demand for data usage if you just think about but the normal course of daily life these things do make sense the power is out and you simply just need to make a call find out where your people are find out you know can you get to your destination does where you're going have power you know all of that stuff secondly a lot of people have been working from home um, or at least operating in a hybrid manner and if you find yourself at home and there's no electricity uh, then chances are a lot of people are going to turn uh, to their cell phones you know buy some data uh, turn your cell phone into a mobile hotspot and uh, you know continue to work um, in that way at the same time power outages do result in traffic lights uh, being out at many intersections which causes a lot of traffic and congestion and we see a lot of people turning to the likes of google maps always as a way uh, to try and beat traffic and that itself needs data and then at the same time you have to think about simple boredom um, the power is out you can't cook eat or anything like that what are you going to do turn to your device your phone tablet laptop whatever it is uh, surf the internet stream content listen to music whatever it is all of it um, requiring access um, to some of that communication over cell phone networks the simplest reason why your network sucks during times of power outages is because if power is out in your area then it likely means that power is out at cell phone towers or cell phone network sites in your area and that results in degraded service or simply no service from a cell phone point of view a lot of cell phone towers actually have backup power of some sort however this is where things actually go tricky and this is where we actually start to break things down firstly backup power is just that 
backup power. It's only meant for emergencies and uh, up until recently it was enough to have uh, perhaps generators or something that can keep a network site on um, if there happens to be the random power outage you know the electricity is going to come back or that at least um, you know towers in the surrounding area will be able to carry traffic um, all the way through. And at the same time cell phone towers in South Africa um, uh, at the advent of the mobile revolution were designed and built with the assumption that ESCOM, the National Power Utility, would be able to provide 100% power to those towers. So when they put up these backup power systems, it was just that, it was backup power. Contrast that to a country like Nigeria, where the assumption is that you have to provide at least, you know, 90, 95% of your own power. So you are building um, your own power generation as part of the design. Um, the things like your generators and batteries are not backup power. They are the power and you, gener and you design your sites accordingly. Unfortunately, things in South Africa have escalated and that brings us neatly to the second major issue. And that's the fact that back in the day, as we mentioned, um, your power outages were not for that long. They were random and they would quickly be resolved. But as things have escalated, mobile operators have been forced uh, to actually invest in better backup and more backup power to actually keep the lights on for their networks during power outages. And this is where we find ourselves today. And this is the heart um, of the issue around why the network sucks during uh, some of these load shedding times. At this point, it helps to remember what we spoke about earlier on about the amount of hours that are switched off um, at various stages of load shedding. As mobile operators have been investing in this power, some operators have backup power that will last for four hours. Some operators have backup power that will last for up to six hours and for stages one to four of load shedding this has uh, normally been okay but beyond that that's where um, a lot of issues tend to occur and that's where uh, South Africa is at the moment predominantly stage five and stage six load shedding which means um, your power can be out for up to nine to ten hours of no power in a day a lot of these battery systems take 12 to 18 hours to charge and if you think about uh, a situation where power is out uh, for up to 10 hours then it means that your batteries are not getting enough time uh, to charge fully within a day and if you have a cycle like that in a day where you aren't able to charge up to a hundred percent then it means that the next day you could start off with let's say 70 or 80 percent uh, battery capacity um, the power goes out once again for another nine to ten hours and then you are running the batteries down they don't have enough time to charge and the and the situation you know finds itself compounding and all this is made worse by faults and unexpected outages yes you can have a schedule around how when how and when power is going to go out but in certain instances power goes out for even longer in my own uh, area where we stay power um, has gone out for 20 30 hours um, at a time in certain instances where there's a damage or where there's a fault in some instances you might start the day off uh, being told that you're going to be at stage one or two and quickly things fall apart and you're now at stage five or six by the end of the day which makes planning that much harder third issue to consider is the fact that as much as we're talking about batteries they aren't the only form of backup power diesel generators for example have long been a staple um, for a lot of buildings companies organizations and the like and cell phone towers are no different however if you are trying to keep your towers on uh, for up to you know 10 12 hours in a day uh, running off of diesel generators those costs um, quickly rack up and especially if you think about it within the context of where fuel prices are at the beginning of uh, 2023 we've all been through the pandemic and the Russia Ukraine war which has done um, crazy things in terms of the oil price in economics we speak about the unintended consequences of certain actions or certain conditions and I believe the fourth issue um, is one of those 
The fact that uh, power has become such an issue um, has led to there being a huge uh, black market for some of the backup power items, particularly uh, lithium ion batteries. And that is a big issue uh, that cell phone operators are facing at the moment, theft and vandalism of network sites. Because you've got uh, these batteries that are selling for high prices on the black market, there's a lot of targeting that is being had on uh, cell phone towers i've actually been uh, to a couple of tower uh, tower sites myself and seen this uh, for myself it's very organized these guys are very serious and they come to get uh, you know some of these batteries when theft or vandalism occurs at a network site it can take up to four days uh, to actually get that cell phone tower back online depending on uh, network operators ability to get technicians on site as well as equipment equipment uh, and replacements to actually fix things and that leads us on to the fifth issue that i want to address a lot of the points that i've raised have been within the context of uh, being in a large city um, in south africa however a large number of people still live in uh, what are considered to be secondary towns as well as rural areas and uh, getting technicians as well as replacements and equipment uh, to some some of these cell phone sites is going to take even longer just given how remote uh, some of these areas are think about uh, some of the areas where you have uh, you know vast farmlands and the like if a cell phone tower goes out in one of those areas getting uh, the equipment and the people to come back and fix um, is one of those things that takes time and that then results in uh, some of these areas having network outages for much much longer uh, than what is being experienced in your cities so that's it you know for this video hopefully um, we've been able to unpack things and help you to understand a little bit why um, network degradation tends to happen yes uh, the mobile operators have been investing quite a bit in actually backing up their cell phone sites and actually keeping the lights on but a lot of the issues that uh, we raised are a big issue particularly uh, the costs that are you know ramping up to actually keep things on especially when you think about uh, the theft and the vandalism um, that then you know comes into compound uh, the outages that are already there you guys can let us know you know what's been your experience during load shedding you know has your network been out are you in one of those areas where um, things are unaffected and you continue uh, to have uh, the best cell phone reception or are you on the extreme end where you might even have no reception at all you guys can let us know what you think are you curious about anything when it comes to this particular discussion um, are there any curiosities that you might have let us know in the comments and i'll catch you guys in the next video hey this is baby g and you're watching the mob justice channel follow us on twitter instagram and facebook live it love it like it this is the mob justice tv